Why are you scared? That anything that stands on the way of the revolution, it must be eliminated in the best interest of the revolution. And we must never be scared to do that. The founding manifesto of the EFF says we'll take power by all means necessary. And therefore revolutionaries, when confronted by that situation, should never think twice. Cowards are not for the revolution. The EFF must be known that it is not a playground for racists. That any racist that plays next to the EFF and threatens and beat up the membership and the leadership of the EFF, that is an application to meet your maker with immediate effect. You were beaten by a racist. And you never did anything. Let's hope this new leadership will make a follow-up on that racist because there must be a follow-up on that racist. I'm not asking you to do what I've not done. When a racist confronted me at Winnie Mandela's funeral, I did what I was expected to do because I was not scared of a white man. You get beaten by white people here and you call yourself an organization of Fanon. Racism is violence and violence can only be earned by violence. Not any other necessary means. It must be confronted. And racism is violence. What do you do, Koli? Because they never hear anything. The only language they know is the language they speak. So they ought to be put at their right place. Are you, are you saying I am, I am a racist by saying no racist must play next to the EFF? No. Am the, I racist? The issue here is incitement. Uh, what am I inciting? That, when you that say no racist must play next to the EFF. Is that a, an incitement? No. And, when you and say if they dare do that, nip it on the butt, cut the throat of racism when and white say, supremacy. When you say to the members of the EFF in that PPA that you must follow up. I expect you to follow up yes. on that racism. Yes. That's incitement. How is follow up an incitement? Yeah. What must I follow up on? They must follow up on what happened to the racist and they must intervene decisively. What does that Since mean? when is a follow up a, a problem? When I proposed a girl today, I follow up. It's, it's an incitement when I follow up. You? The English of uh, 4 or 5 has changed. That follow up means violence. That's a distortion of the word. They must follow up on what happened to that racist who beat up not only black people, mm. black black women. The white men till to date, mm. despite the fact that cases were opened, is still not arrested because it's a white man. Had it been a black guy who unleashed such unjustifiable violence against a white woman, what would have happened to that black person? We ought to confront racism everywhere else where it raises its ugly head. And if it has not been attended to, it must be followed up mm. so that no one dares to repeat such a similar mistake. In a country that is already battling with uh, violence, I mean, I don't have to tell you the stories that we have been reporting on in the past yes. week, pa particularly the violation of women at the hands of men. We are a country that is struggling with dealing with violence. Is that the best way that the EFF thinks it can resolve such matters? What option are you giving me? Where are you when an African woman is beaten with a cricket bat? Where is the Human Rights Commission? The picture is there. If anything, you can't even play it here because it's not favoring your narrative. But the, the video is there of a white, well-built African male Beating up an African woman with a cricket bat is not an issue on the ENCA because the black lives, I mean, in the, in the 4 5, the black life doesn't matter. I'm not going to buy into that narrative that black people must be beaten up and the next thing I must keep quiet. I'm not going to keep quiet. 
do anything you want to do to me. I'm not going to keep quiet. I'm not going to allow the white Africaners in particular to perpetuate institutionalized racism in South Africa and we keep quiet and we are being, you are being silenced by institutions that must be coming into our defense. Where is the Human Rights Commission for that woman who was beaten there? Where are they? Do they think we are a soft target? Let them do what they want to do. We are not right. going to apologize for that. And so final word is that there is not going to there's not going to be any apology and all roads lead to equality court. I'm not going to any equality court. They can go to equality court. What am I doing in equality court? You take me to equality court without listening to me first? Huh? What happened to those commissioners there who say they are standing for human rights? Why can't they stand for my rights? That a, a, an, an Indian legal, uh, a head of legal uh, in human rights uh, uh, commission decide on his own because he thinks he's a, he's a DP2 white on his own to find me guilt and tell me to apologize without listening to me. They've done it to Zuma. They can do it to me as well. I don't care. But I'm not going to be a puppet of people who are advancing white supremacy and, and want to uh, legitimize their nonsense mm. at the expense of my rights, the rights that so many people died for. I'm not going to compromise on that. All right, let's move on from that and talk yes. about these provincial assemblies, yes. people's assemblies. You have crisscrossed the country. And one of the issues I'd like to pick up on is that you have berated the structures for not electing enough women into leadership structures. Why do you think that behavior persists? Well, we come from a patriarchal society. And therefore, the problems of our society will always show their ugly faces in our organizations because we are made of members of that society. Mm -hmm. But those who join the EFF should know that by joining the EFF, you admit that you are an advanced detachment of society. And therefore, the illnesses of society should not characterize the outcome of a meeting of the EFF. Mm -hmm. So it is so unfortunate that you will have a province like Eastern Cape electing five males into the top five. And by the way, it's the only province. All provinces of the EFF have elected women into structures of the EFF without any intervention. Mm. That is the only province I've had to uh, uh, speak out against. In, in line with the EFF principle of constructive self-criticism. Yeah. So when I criticize them, I criticize myself. And as a result, the World Council met yesterday, received the report of the Eastern Cape, and a decisive intervention will be made in the best interest of making sure that nothing compromises the principal position of the EFF when it comes to gender equality. But otherwise, generally, all of them went so smooth. You have never seen such an organization in the past decade organizing such a smooth sailing, well-oiled machinery. Uh, in the country. Mm. Highly organized, democratic, no intervention, no interference by the leadership. For those provinces that still find it problematic or find it difficult to infuse women into leadership structures, do you think that legislating the gender parity uh, rules, for example, yes. will possibly fix the problem? We are going to propose that in our next National uh, People's Assembly, that the officials uh, of the EFF, there should be a certain percentage, but we, with regard to the whole structure as a PCT or RCT or BCT or uh, the central command team, the composition of it all at the end must be 50%. So we now realize that they are now using the officials to exclude the women. So let's also take it there. Uh, it's a principle that we are prepared to force it through their throats. Uh, and if they don't like it, the door is open. We are not going to sit in an organization with people who still see women as not being equal yeah. to them. Because we come from a perspective that women are equal and they are capable to lead. And therefore, you can't have a conference constituted by 60% of women. Because that conference was constituted by 60%, 60% mm -hmm. percent of women. And still doesn't come with at least one woman in the top five. It was an embarrassment. As you build these structures, 
in provinces. And I like to use the word yeah. grassroots yeah. because the EFF, I think, for some time has been wanting to build what is called organic uh, structures in the various provinces. Does it give you a sense now that you stand a fair chance of taking over some of these provinces? And if so, which ones are easy pickings for the EFF? Well, we struggled a lot in the coastal, and we're seeing a huge improvement in uh, KZN, uh, and some slight improvement in the Eastern Cape. But the elected leadership, in particular the chairperson of the Eastern Cape, inspires a lot of hope and confidence in us that we're going to turn things around in that province. He's got the necessary energy, he's got the necessary vision, and he's driven. And uh, uh, for some time we needed someone with that type of energy who is uh, having a conviction of his own and he's driven by, by that. Yeah. We've got new leadership in the Western Cape. Okay. Um, we hope to see uh, uh, some growth there. Even with one million membership recruitment in the Western Cape, we're still not doing well uh, with regard to that. Uh, we have had reflections yesterday some form of intervention is going to be made with the new leadership who are confident enough that will turn things around. So these conferences for me have given some sense of hope and they've revived uh, something in me that it is not all lost. We are not uh, stuck. We are going to make a huge progress and Houghton comes number one uh, when it comes to one of those provinces that uh, we are going to be targeting Mwisen in Lozis now, finished in Limpopo, has done a great job mm. uh, in Limpopo. In 95% of the wards of Limpopo have existing branches of the EFF with real members. And uh, now we are going to take them to PPA. They are the last ones who are now going to be taken to the PPA. He thinks when he finishes Limpopo, is going to rest. We are going to redeploy him back into Jobek mm. to work into Hauti. Remember the people of Limpopo, Jobek and Gauteng is one thing. Yeah. So in, in Gauteng to uh, now work with the structures of the EFF because we want this province. Mm. And uh, we want it at all cost. We're going to do everything in our power to take this province and turn it around so that our people in Gauteng start benefiting from uh, the fruits of economic freedom. How do you respond to commentators who say the growth of the EFF has somewhat stagnated. It's stagnated because it's neglected some sections of the population. Well, the sections that are neglected are very insignificant. Um, we, I just said to you now, we exist in the 90% of all the wards in South Africa. So there is no section that uh, is uh, neglected. We are running a well-oiled machinery so, so and we're highly focused. Infusion of Indian people, colored people, white people inside the EFF. I will say the colored community is part of the EFF community in their huge numbers and Africans. Very small, tiny uh, numbers when it comes to the Indians and the whites. We, we have not neglected them. They come from a position of privilege and we do not represent that. We represent the oppressed and the whites were not oppressed and the Indians were the least oppressed mm. and therefore uh, do not see any need to join the struggle that seek to liberate the oppressed because they are not oppressed. Mm. So they are not really our target market. If they come and want to join a just cause of liberating those who are not uh, liberated, even when they are liberated, mm. they are more than welcome uh, into the EFF. The EFF is an anti-racist uh, organization and welcomes everybody who subscribes to a leftist perspective and seeks to expropriate land without compensation and deliver economic freedom into the hands of ordinary people of South Africa. If you say what is this taking place now mm. is what was going to take place at province or national, then you should include us there. We are participating now. We never said we can't negotiate with the DA. The DA rejected us because they think the racists who are voting for Freedom Front mm. is on the basis of them working with the EFF yeah. and therefore they left the EFF so that they can re reclaim the votes of the racists. 
But the races keep on leaving them, whether they are working with the EFF or not. So they've become irrelevant in that sense. But we are talking, we, we are more than willing to talk to Helen Zile. She can call us all the names she wants to call us. Mm. But we understand the coalition politics very well. Because we come from the student movement, by the way. There were points where we uh, won elections in the SRCs in the universities and were short of one vote. Uh, 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 in the in University of Teflop, for instance. Mm. Uh, uh, and that one vote is with SCO. And the SCO says, no, we can give you one vote, but we want to be president. We have had to compromise and give the SCO, the president of the SRC, with one seat. Okay, so right. we are more than willing to talk. Why? We know that coalition politics survive through permanent engagement of parties involved. So okay. even the ANC, we are more than willing to talk to them. We are not going to vote for their motion of no confidence now. We were supposed to stand today for... Uh, APEC uh, uh, chairperson's committee, uh, we withdrew because there's now no clear agreement now with the ANC. But the ANC, if it wants to come back to the EFF, they will have to do one and one thing only. They have to go and put the mayor of Ikuruleni first of the EFF. Then we can talk. You are a member of parliament. That makes you a lawmaker. Do you not run the risk of denigrating the stature of that body, shouldn't you be leading by example and saying, okay, we'll comply because this is a constitutional body? You're asking me to be violated because I'm a member of parliament. I make the law. I know the constitution. I'm not going to be violated because I'm a member of parliament. Mm. Nowhere in the constitution does it say members of parliament must be violated even when it is openly clear my brother, you ought to agree with me. I've got a right to be heard by the Human Rights Commission. It received complaints about me. It must give me an opportunity to make representations so that I justify the things I said. They make a conclusion without listening to me. Yeah. All what right. type of democracy is that where the other side is not being heard? Is it because I'm an African? Is it because I'm a, a child of a domestic worker that my view doesn't matter? That my side of the story doesn't matter. That the white man complained. And because the white man complained, his views are supreme than mine. I'm not going to allow that. Not from a human rights commission. Not from anyone. Not even from the courts. The courts hears hardened criminals. They hear this, their side of the story. I'm making a political articulation. And human rights commission, all they can do, what do you mean by this? At least, even if they've taken a decision, let them be seen to be, you know, like listening to the other side. That's all right. I'm saying. There is a commissioner of police in KZN called Mkwanaz, who's told the whole of South Africa, when the looters were going to loot SAB breweries, I got seven calls from ministers to go and protect breweries. But when the looters were going to loot uh, the shopping malls, not a single minister called me, including my minister. This person is talking about seven ministers that called him. He's not scared to call them out in public. Right. Because he's a career policeman. That is a man you need at, at the national level to fight crime and corruption. Why? They can't put him because they're not in control of him. They've put Masemula there. Do you know that Masemula can't type an email? The whole police commissioner can't type an email. A person who says he has intellectually contributed to the geography of knowledge in relation to coalitions mm -hmm. can speak like that. Because if indeed he wrote a book where he, atti he attached his, 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 his name, he would have known that a party of whatever percentage in a coalition arrangement can emerge as a mayor. The reason I'm asking you these questions has to do with your recent attendance in Lesotho, yeah. of the inauguration of the Prime Minister there, yeah. Sam Matekanen. His party was only formed in March. And the groundswell of support has now propelled him to be in office. Yes, he didn't get a majority in Parliament, but he was just shy of five votes. Yeah. I'm saying to you that South Africans are yearning 
for something new in this country. If the ANC itself, which has been in government for the longest time, mm -hmm. is itself admitting that it is in crisis, <laughs> we ordinary South Africans can only be desperate mm -hmm. to be taken out of that quagmire. Mm -hmm. Why is the EFF not a credible alternative? The EFF, it is a credible alternative. I've got more votes than some Matekani, so you're comparing apples with oranges. I've got more votes than him. So if, if, if I was in Lesotho, I'll be a prime minister plus a president at the same time. So, because I've got more votes. So, the population of South Africa, in comparison to the population of Lesotho, it's unfair. So, the EFF seeks to introduce a radical perspective. And the only way to do that is to do it ground up. You ought to conscientize society. And conscientizing society is not a 21st birthday party. It is a process that takes forever. Because you are going to introduce things that people are not used to. So don't do a rush-rush arrangement. Educate people politically. And that's what we are doing. When we said we are recruiting one million members this year, and then next year we are politicizing them, in 2024, they become the best of the best ground forces of the EFF, well equipped with tools of analysis. So we are building something qualitative. And, and, and that will translate into a quality government that will be supported by our people. You don't want to take government today, expropriate the land, the same people who voted for you turn against you. Because they didn't understand the policy you advocated. How do you respond to a skeptic who says a party that is going to take South Africa out of where it is right now to the next level is yet to be born? Because that's someone who clearly does not see an option in what is on offer right now. If people decide to be blind, it's not a problem. Everybody can see that EFF is the government in waiting in South Africa. Instead of comparing us with Prime Minister of Lesotho, Sam, compare, at with the, compare us with the ANC. How many years did it take them to get into power? And no one has ever been impatient with them because they, everybody understood that the ideas that the ANC represented at the time will take forever for people to get in their numbers into the revolution and fight for democracy. How so, many years, sorry to cut in, how many years did it take Hakainde Hichilema, who is now president in Zambia, to be president there. So I'm telling you, it took him forever. He was actually living in prison. I had to go fight for his release from prison because he destabilized the convoy of the president. He tried many times. H&H mm. uh, &H tried many times. And uh, he failed. The one in Malawi has been trying as well. Mm. Uh, and he failed. Uh, in Zimbabwe, look at the Zimbabwean situation. Are you going to say to me, uh, the party that is going to liberate Zimbabweans is still to be born? It is the new ideas that people take time to buy into. Mm. But once they bought into those ideas, the tide will turn and will turn for the benefit of our people. So, uh, again, you can talk h, &H in Zambia and talk uh, Malawi. In comparison to South Africa, the numbers are very, very high. Mm. And those are the numbers that we seek to convince ourselves uh, in the EFF. Look at, I mean, the Zimbabwean situation is, a, is, is one example where you should be saying, the ground is fertile. The people by now, there is no currency, there is no infrastructure, there is nothing. Mm. The people by now should be turning to an alternative. There is an alternative in Zimbabwe. Why are the people not turning into an alternative? It is because it takes forever for people to warm up uh, uh, to new ideas. And uh, 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 politics move like an elephant. You don't have to be impatient with them. But once they've passed, they leave a significant mark. In a way, this conversation leads us to the coalitions. Yeah. And your chance to demonstrate what an EFF government would look like in Ekuruleni, those chances were dashed this week, and that's because your candidate withdrew. Why did that happen? Well, if our candidate had not withdrawn, the ANC candidate was going to win. And uh, we didn't want that. 
um, we want Igurulene to demonstrate to our people that we've got capacity to lead um, um, uh, in a manner that is beneficial to the uh, citizens of that particular city. So it's not because we were cowards. We were looking forward. Uh, the young man was readily available uh, uh, to lead. 